the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. Today is Sunday, January 23rd, 2022, and this is It All Began in the 70s, A White Speck, Season 3, Episode 15. So I was a product in the South of forced integration, if anybody's been alive long enough to remember that. Growing up in the Deep South, um, I was forced uh, to be sent across town out of my school district into uh, an all-black school. In fact, um, I remember being one of a handful of kids. I mean, literally um, a white speck in a sea of of black kids. Um, I remember having uh, angry parents throwing things at the bus. I was a small child when this started. Um, This was in grade school. You know, you don't have any idea what all that is about. Um, even though I grew up around some, now I now that I understand racism and I I'm able to look at it in the rearview mirror, I was pretty much surrounded by um, racist. I mean, I attempts to recruit me into the KKK uh, happened more than once. I had friends that proudly uh, flew the rebel flag. In fact, it was the flag of our high school. I'm not sure if it still is. Um, Lots of very negative views towards towards, uh, black people. I mean, that's what we have here in the South. Uh, You know, that's the predominant divide. And just, uh, I never really understood why that view, you know, even though I was, it was all around me. I mean, it was all around me. I, it was, now that I look back, it's incredible how much, I mean, I would say more than three quarters of the people that I went to school with were very heavily racist. So to be sent, um, across town from our, you know, white bread, so to speak, school district into, the um, very heavily, um, you know, black school district was uh, enough of a flashpoint that there were violent episodes. I mean, what I can specifically remember is just um, angry parents throwing things at our school bus. And as a little kid, I just couldn't comprehend why uh, this was going on and just kind of shrugged it off. You don't take things too seriously when you're you know, in the single digits, basically, you don't even really know what's going on. And as far as going to the school, okay, so I'm, you know, I'm going to this school. And I remember it was a bit more run down, you know, it was an older school. But beyond that, as far as uh, having any like difficulties with socializing, I, I, I had plenty of uh, black friends, and uh, I didn't really I didn't understand what the big deal was. I never had a, a minute's trouble. I never had any anybody give me a hard time. Um, you know, I, I have no negative memories of that at all. Um, just that it was a little strange that we seemed to be the minority. <laughs> we seemed to be the minority. Um, you know, the few of us that were sent across town were the minority in this school. So maybe there's... Um, there's a there's a message there. There's a, a lesson there that I learned early in life without realizing it. Uh, I think that you you generally get back what you put out. So uh, you know if you put out a a racist vibe or you treat people that way or you look at people down your nose or whatever that you know you're going to get get what you give. You know I've said that many times in other uh, media pieces and things just in general that you get what you give. You put out negative, you're going to get back negative. It's just that simple. There's, It's a law, okay? There's no way around it. So <clears throat> anyway, that's a little bit of more history. I think maybe it has had some, you know, effect on my ability to put myself in other people's shoes. I've, been, I've, I've always been very sympathetic to the less fortunate and and trying to understand how things happen and how 
um, you know, how people got their start and how that led to the way they see the world. Uh, environment is huge. Uh, you know, the whole nature versus nurture. I mean, where you get your start certainly has a huge impact on where you're going to end up. And as time goes on and I have more life experience, I see that's only more more true. It's um, incredibly difficult when you start in a bad place to get out of that. So that's all for today. Um, a couple of notes, as always, in the show notes. There are uh, resources, the links to um, relevant resources for the Sports Vote Campaign and All Sports Market. That's always there. There's also ways to c- contribute if you want to. Um, as always, if you forward the receipt to help at allsportsmarket.com, I'll uh, send you some special bonuses. And uh, i just like to point out that at this point in time, as I indicated in the last podcast, this is not some kind of tactic, the vow of poverty. I'm very serious. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Um, in fact, I've been thinking about it probably for about 10 years now, actually. Um, going back to the one of the original uh, episodes of this, my childhood desire to become... Uh, you know, to I mean, I consider being a priest, and that's that's no joke. Um, my parents would tell you that if you asked them right now. Um, I mean, I, I said that when I was a child. So this is not new, um, but I'm formalizing it. I for, actually formalized it last year, and in this process of transitioning to Alper and getting out of this, my desire is to uh, do this full-time, to just produce enough valuable Bible-based materials to... Um, give me food and shelter. Uh, that's all I'm interested in. I have not even clothing at this point. I've got that all taken care of. So if you contribute, that's what you're contributing to is food and shelter. That's all. Uh, that's all I'm asking for. Um, and then just I am doing um, processes every day and working on ASM every day, even though I'm not paid for it. Uh, and I have been doing that for really the last two years. Um ASM has not supported me or, or my ability to pay rent or food or anything uh, since the um, sports was shut down from the pandemic. It's, it's, not, it's not been my support at all, and all of my legal documents and tax filings will prove that. Incidentally, I want to point out that I turned over without a fight because uh, I have nothing to hide. Seven years, more than seven years of, of transaction by transaction detail to the courts. Uh, that's almost 30,000 entries, every single penny that's touched my hand, regardless of the source um, and everywhere it was spent. I challenge anyone out there, if can you produce a penny-by-penny penny accounting with a couple mouse clicks of every penny you've touched in the last seven years? Could you even do it for the last one year? Uh, I can actually do it for more than 10 years, penny-by-penny penny transaction accounting. So uh, I have nothing to hide, um, never have. You know, I've done everything I've said and spent everything in the direction to the best of my knowledge to advance uh, this mission. So anybody that's looking to find faults, not going to find it. So um, so I'd like to also say that starting, um, it'll be in uh, the first day of February. So starting February 1st, I'm going to begin publishing um, my income and expense by the month. So every single, I may even do it more frequently than that because it's it's so little actually. <laughs> um, what I spend and what I take in down to the cent. Um, and this is not a game. I have nothing to hide, so why not? So that's what I'm going to do to prove that my commitment is to basically to transition out of, of this role to Alper, which I said more than 10 years ago that he was going to end up in this role. I mean, I said it when I met him in person in Costa Rica, and I had witnesses to this. So this is not re-engineering history. This is what happened. Um, We're advancing the SEC settlement discussions and all that. Again, that's a trigger for him to take over. And then once he takes over, I want to just full-time pursue um, putting putting out the word, putting out Bible-related materials, and that that be my sustenance for food and shelter. That's my desire. Uh, It's not a joke. 
It's uh, not because I can't do something else. In fact, um, there's a steady pull trying to get me to get deeper into other things. I have a Rolodex. First of all, there's a, there's a pull to try to get me deeper involved in something that I wanted to do since I was a child, and I still push back on that. I don't do it, even though I could. Not to mention a lot of, um, a lot of uh, contacts that I made over the years. If I told them that I wanted something to do, I wouldn't have to look very far. But I'm just not interested anymore. Um, I'm not interested in the secular world. I'm not interested in what it has to offer. I've seen what it has to offer. Um, I've done the Hollywood thing. I um, produced five parties. Other you know, celebrities attended our parties. I didn't, you know, it doesn't really go further than that. Um, you know, I know what the money world of New York is about. I, I've given presentations in front of VIPs, and you know, I did that at the Hero Club. And um, you know, it doesn't go much further than than giving a presentation in front of, in front of a bunch of VIPs in the uh, in the new World Trade Center tower. You know, Condé Nast floors, going up and down the elevators with models and things, and giving your talk in front of. Uh, bunch of VIPs, including Phil Collins' wife at the time, and then, you know, having people come up and want to talk to you and all that stuff. So, I mean, I I get it, you know. Um, I just don't care. And so um, what I want to do is I want to uh, make my living off of just putting out the Word, and uh, I believe I've learned enough about Bible teaching or enough about the Bible to produce materials that tie into my story. You know, I can basically say, look, this is my story and it validates what's in the Bible. That's my credibility, uh, is that I've experienced these things firsthand. And I can vouch firsthand. um, And I can prove through example uh, a lot of stuff actually related to the finances of ASM and how we got here. There's a whole bunch of things that just are super... They're they're not explainable how, how they happened and when they happened. And all of that is contained in my detailed accounting of everything that's ever been spent. Um, you know, at the time, I didn't have, I saw something supernatural was happening because just there would be a need for X amount of dollars that was very um, urgent and it was real. And then the money would just appear or I would know exactly what kind of a promotion to write to to make it show up just in exactly the right moment. I mean, that happened over and over and over and over again. And if any of that ser- series of events was broken apart, there would be no ASM right now. It would not exist. You wouldn't have anything there. There would be no trading. There'd be nothing. Um, just so many opportunities for it to fall apart, and it didn't. Uh, so all of that is part of the story, but I have to focus on that to tie it all together in, in a meaningful way so that I can uh, show the world what really happened here and it all goes back to a promise I've made. And I, I've said this, uh, I'm pretty sure I said this in other podcasts. There was a moment in time when I was in um, Houston that I was at my wit's end and all we really had was the SRI paperwork and a whole bunch of angry people and, you know, the crash of the uh, 2008 housing crash and all that that brought everything to its knees, including broke ASM, ASM apart the first time. Um, you know, the 2009 original platform, you know, when it went down in 2009. So uh, there was a moment in time when I literally got on my knees and asked God, look, just show me the way, just show me how to get this all put back together so I can come through for everybody and I'll tell the world um, what happened. I made that promise and, and from that moment, I mean, quite literally from that moment, things started to happen and, you know, Ace appeared out of, I didn't even know where he was. And it goes on and on and on. Okay, so I'm I'm holding up my end of the deal here. I said that I would tell the story, so I have to focus on that. That's my role um, post transition to Alper, and that's what I want to do with the rest of my time in this in this world, however long that is. So if you um, think I deserve to eat and have a place to live, and uh, you want to see that I'm disclosing everything to the penny. Um, then you're going to have you're going to see that beginning in February because I'm going to publish all that information starting from February 1st and then I'm going to continue um doing it indefinitely. So 
I've tied all the books up and I've brought basically brought all my costs down to the absolute minimum number that I can. And so now I'm just going basically going purely on faith and I'm going to continue to finish what I've been working on for many years now, tying all this together so I can basically do a proof that God exists. That's really what I'm after here. The, the story of ASM through through the story of how ASM got back, especially the part after it, it blew up in 2009 from the housing crash. The point from there to here is is, is a supernatural story that I promised to tell if um, it all came back together, which it did. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're still here, even though the tens of thousands of businesses are not from this pandemic who who saw this coming. Um, so I need to do that. I need to, you know, that, that is my life's work past the, the birthing of ASM and then stepping off. Um, the vow of poverty is real. That means I don't care about getting $1 beyond what is needed to have food and shelter and just continue my studies. Basically like a monk. I've actually had that term used on me <laughs> from the outside, which is kind of funny. Um, I'm not going to disagree. That's what I want to do. So uh, links in the description if you want to... Um, help and again forward the receipt if you know for the special bonuses that come along with whatever you provide every dollar counts i don't mean to very very much and you're going to see starting in february how little it really is um i've lowered it to the minimum number possible um short of you know i mean actually i don't think it could go any lower than it is unless i was um uh, living off of somebody else so Anyhow, uh, you know, not sustaining myself. I think it's the minimum number to sustain um, as a as a single person, uh, short of, yeah, basically depending on someone else. So thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, stay safe out there, and I'll speak to you again in two weeks. Bye now.